The Yankees needed a heroic effort yesterday on Saturday from Ben Rice hitting monstrous home runs to power them after Rafael Devers kind of showed up Garrett Cole a little bit. It's been a very, really interesting week all across baseball, you know, with, with you know, tonight, Sunday night's Yankees Red Sox game sort of serving as the capstone to that. And now I wonder why you led with the really one good Yankee thing that's happened over the past, you know, three weeks almost. I mean, the Yankees. Well, you got to give them because they're, they're cause major league worst over that period. By and yet, the way, yet they're still kind of just chugging it. Like I, it's so interesting that well, they're they lost first place. Right, but they're still only one game back of the. They're two games right? back of the Orioles. So it's like they've, they've lost all this ground, but it doesn't really feel like it's made that much of a difference. Yeah, well, that, some of that has to do with the rest of the teams in the division not really making, you know, the Red Sox have are a nice story, have done a nice job, and, and they're going to try to win the series tonight against the Yankees. Um, but I'm not, I guess I, I've doubted them, so I'm going to keep on doubting them, you know, all season long. Like, like you know, they, they've, done, they've done well, but come on, really. I think it's kind of interesting that it feels like the other three teams in the AL East, the Red Sox, the Rays, the Jays, have all sort of traded turns in who's playing well. One of them will play well, get up to third place, and then they'll stop playing well, and then another person, another team will take over. Meanwhile, the Orioles have sort of righted the ship, so to speak, for them. They've reclaimed first place. They've been playing really good baseball lately. They have. And they're looking to cruise into the All-Star break, and that's a team that's probably going to make a move for a starting pitcher at the trading deadline just because they're such a team with an embarrassment of riches just youth in general and you th- while their starting rotation i think is good enough to get them through a regular season i would have a lot of questions about that rotation in a postseason outside from corbin burns well i i think i it's, it's kyle bradish i guess is the guy that hasn't had the year mm-hmm. that they want because if you think of corbin burns uh, who has uh, four quality starts only. I thought he had more than that, and it wasn't four quality starts. He's pitched six innings, however, 13 straight times for the Orioles, six innings oh, or more. Oh, okay. Okay, and 15 out of his 18 starts this year, he pitched six innings He's or never more. gotten less than five. Right, right. So, I mean, he's obviously been everything they could have asked for in terms of, uh, you know, stabilizing that rotation, and Grayson Rodriguez has been good. But I think in, he's been in, a little bit... Yeah, right, right. But in, in a playoff series, you need... Three guys? I think for a World Series run, you need two and a half. You need two guys that are really stellar, and then you need one guy who has a series somewhere in there, whether that's the World Series or the NLCS. That's usually how it goes. So so Bradish is supposed to be that number three, and uh, I guess he's he's not been as good this year. And, And so that's why the only reason why I think the Orioles could go for a starting pitcher, I think they need relief help. Uh, more than they I need think they're going to make a, they're going to make a move for pitching help. I think that's certain. I think the Yankees are going to make a move for lineup help because they're going to have to. Yeah, yeah. Well, only because yeah, they've got the great hitters in the lineup, like everybody knows. And eventually, look at Stanton back. And I don't know what you think of Rizzo anymore as as a ball player. If you think he's a, you know, uh, can't wait to get him back. I, I think it wasn't right, like he was playing that. No, great. I think the problem is right now you look at that Yankee lineup and it's like, okay, well, if we can keep Judge and Soto for beating us, we have a pretty good chance at winning. And there it is, right? Because Volpe's kind of falling back a little bit. That's why. Ben Rice is now leading off and looking like he actually might belong there. And and I'm sure that would be and that would be something that would help the Yankees sort of right this ship is big, Ben Rice coming big. on and suddenly being a, a really strong leadoff hitter for them. And and you know because you know you you've been telling me and you've been right about DJ LeMahieu keep waiting for him to turn into the DJ of like four years ago. Yeah, that's and not ha- he no he's turning into the DJ from four years from now is the problem, right. <laughs> which which isn't good when you're 35. And then the, with the rest of the AL East, it sort of just feels like they're treading water with the Jays and the Rays you know the, they're just you know the, yeah the, yeah I, I think a team like the Ray, I think the Rays probably have a little bit easier in their mind going okay a lot of weird stuff happened to us between injury and outside of baseball things and they just got Shane Baz back finally uh, but that, that teams are that team's trajectory changed the moment Franco did what he did. And I that, think that's, that's a fair, fair comment to so, make. So they much, put so much money into they it, put, much less. They, they signed him to a huge contract. They put a ton of money into him. I mean, obviously, they have that money freed up, but just you don't have that player. Not yet. Right. You don't have that player, you know, that, that you can rely on, and I think that's going to be the biggest thing for them. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they do. I think there's a good chance that they and the Jays sell at the deadline. I think hmm. 
I think that that's our. And I think it's. I think the Red Sox could be buyers at the deadline. I, there's a, there's a part of me that thinks you know the Red Sox are thinking you know we can, we can do this and and you know let's talk about Rafael Devers for a second. So he got his one thousandth hit mm -hmm. this week, um, which you know okay that's a thousand hits. It's you know you know not three thousand hits, but he got him before age twenty eight, and he's only the sixth Red Sox player uh, to do that by age twenty eight. And the other the names are really great. Of the other guys I did it, Xander Bogarts, who maybe would have been a Hall of Famer or he could still be if he has a, a turnaround. Bobby Doerr, almost mm -hmm. a Hall of Famer, but not quite. Jim Rice Hall of Famer, Tris Speaker Hall of Famer, Carl Yastrzemski Hall of Famer. So when you do that and you wear a Red Sox company. uniform, the future looks pretty bright for you. So that player, I think, is doesn't get enough credit for basically taking the team on his back and carrying him around for years now. Since the Mookie trade. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you get guys like Tristan Cassis who come in, you know, nice player, and he's, you know, he's going to, you've got Jared Duran who's having an unbelievable year. Oh, yeah. From, and one of, the, one of the most exciting players in the league. But there's Devers just kind of motoring along going, yeah, just ride me all the time. I'm always here. I'm always here. And what you could say is when you look at a team like the Red Sox, why they're 48 and 40 as opposed to a team like the Guardians, who are now sitting atop the AL Central, that's because Jose Ramirez, the Guardians all-star. Yeah, he's there, season. Rafael Dev, he's right? There, but he finally got Stephen Kwan's emergence this year as right. another top-flight like top flight player that's then powered them to just cruising in the, the, the AL Central. And, you know, the Twins have climbed up out of the mire. They're now at 51 wins. They're feeling really good especially with the way nobody in the West has been able to distinguish themselves. You're, if you're the Twins, you're thinking, okay, it's going to be hard for us to miss the playoffs. We're, we're right where we need to be for right, right. now, and, and hopefully they, they'll get better as the season goes on. Um, the Royals, you know, they're, they're still over 500 by, what, five games going into Sunday? The or, Royals I don't know are what doing, they're doing today. It, for where the Royals were, this is exactly what they were hoping for this season. They're going to go into the second half with a really solid chance to compete for a wild card spot. All those guys are going to get to play meaningful baseball into August and September, and maybe they make the playoffs. I think if you were a Royal fan, that's exactly what you were hoping for. They're winning for. today again, so they are going to... Meanwhile, go. if you were a Tiger fan, you're kind of, even though you... I said their season was over last week. Right, but you know, if you're a Tiger fan, you're going to be frustrated, because yes, Tarek Skrubel gave, Skrubel gave you a great start today, but you're 42 and 48. It doesn't look like you're, you know, unless you suddenly turn around and have no. an unbelievable second half. Where are you going with this team? No, you've not had the emergence of a player on the offensive side of the ball. There it is. And I think that's something that's concerning. And I think you have to be worried about that. And Riley Green's a very nice baseball player. And I, I, but, but any, but when all I can describe him is as a very nice baseball player. You're right. Right. Well, he's not the guy who's leading you right. know, the team, and so they have a lot of sort of. B offensive players, guys at they on their need, best they day. Need a couple A's. They need a couple of A's, yes. And so I think uh, not, not Oakland, Oakland A. Right, yeah, I mean, you, at the same time, I, I think they would be totally fine getting a Shane Langoliers or a uh, yeah. A, who's who's the other guy that's really been really good for them this year? Brett Rooker uh, uh, on the Rooker. A's. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. He's uh, he's the guy that you think is going to get traded at the trading deadline. And so let's talk about the West and the and the A's. Who um, I think it's because we don't need to talk about the Chicago White Sox. No, I I, I saw that the A's though are two games under 500 at home and like 23 games or 22 games under 500 on the road. So the fact that they're leaving Oakland's uh, Coliseum and, and, and going to move and the fans aren't coming and they're still winning but at a much higher rate. It's like they're like playing in the home ballpark that they're... Yeah, that that, that, it's just totally weird. And and I, th I actually think the, Bra the uh, A's have outperformed what I thought they would be. They actually have had a couple of good stretches. Mm -hmm. They've won some games in a row. Um, you know, they, they know I, I give it to them. They're, they're not a good team. They're not they're going not, to but be... They're not atrociously bad. They're not unwatchably bad like they were last season. And there's a very big difference I think people don't appreciate in like, the degrees of badness. Because your team can be bad, but it can be watchably bad. And then it can be unwatchably painfully bad. For, like, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're worse in the loss column. Because a team right under 500 could be more frustrating and impossibly bad to watch than a team that's worse than that. But then there could be teams like last year's Oakland Athletics where they just felt hapless for so much of it. And, and I think you would say that about teams like the White Sox right. uh, this year. And, and in terms of run differential, they are the, the, the bottom of the leagues, both leagues, 161 negative 
run differential this season, which is the worst in Major League right. Baseball. In comparison, the, the Oakland Athletics are negative 86, so they're close to double. So they're halfway worse as, as, as right. much as, as the White Sox are. Um, anyway, um, the Angels also, uh, you know, they have a little good streak, and then they, they go kind of back in the, you know, up and down, and just not a, not a very good team, but their manager has a lot of fire, and I, I can only imagine what they would be if they didn't have Ron Washington minding the store there for them. I, yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll give them the credit that they're not that bad. They're not. They're not unwatchable. They are professional. He's he's a professional. It's got to be. He knew he was in for a bad job before Mike Trout got hurt. Right. You knew <laughs> you knew this was a transitory period for the Angels, and then Mike Trout got hurt. So you knew this was going to rough you be a rough year no matter what. So the fact that they're not impossibly bad is probably a testament to a decent job that he's but doing. that's all those teams are and and we keep waiting for the texas rangers i do at least to I, turn it around I, I now today they're having a big big win but you know they're, they're running out of time they, they've almost run out of time they're, at this they're, point. they're pushing this really far and you know they're gonna getting back uh the grom is i don't know when that's happening at this point still so they're still waiting for for pitching to, they're to, still waiting to get for into a gear. miracle now yeah it really well i'm not sure if it's quite that bad yet but uh, because they play behind the improved Improved Astros who kind of have gotten it together, and if you ask me today, I would say the Astros will be the American League West champion. Well, I think the thing that we didn't count on this year now. was Julio Rodriguez vanishing as an offensive. Well, ball he had player. just started getting it together, by the way, you know, over the past week or so, and then of course got hit last night. And, right, but and he's been, he's been bad this off season. A two ninety five on base this whole season. You see. Yeah, he's at two ninety five on base. He's hitting under two forty. He's got an OPS plus, oh, an OPS of uh, six thirty with an OPS plus of eighty five. And that's so below that's average. That's very bad. And so you know, he had another rough day. Uh, or I mean, so it, with him, he's just been a solid glove guy. But if he's not a dynamic player, and really outside of that absolutely unreal August he had last year, he's not been the, the most potent offensive player. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Seattle sort of manages what has been a very, very meager offensive lineup that they've been they have with. You're right. So right. They right. So you have to go and get some offense, and you expected it more from Julio Rodriguez. And when you don't get it from him, uh, and then the rest of the guys kind of you know scuffle around, uh, now you're really looking for it. And I expect them to make a move for one, if not two, uh, you know, gonna guys that to, might right, be able to help. Just, they can pitch. This has been like a 44-point OPS plus drop for Rodriguez this season. And now that we're at 90 games, so you can no longer sort of dismiss where guys are as something that's purely a function of sample size. They're still in first place. Now it's down to a couple of games, though. Right. Uh, the but Astros are closing. Th th it sort of feels like an inevitability. It does. That's why, as I said, I think the Astros will win that division. Uh, and then over in the National League, you know, you had a series today that ended uh, with the Braves and the Phillies. Uh, and the Braves winning six to nothing to take two of three uh, from the Phillies, but the Phillies still have a very, very comfortable lead over the Braves. Um, I, I think that it's interesting because everybody in the NL over their last ten is either five and five, four and six, or six and four, with the exception of the Padres, who are seven and three. So everybody's been playing pretty much. 500 baseball the last week or so in the NL. So basically nothing has happened. Nothing's really changed <laughs> right. in the NL. The teams are still where you expect them to be. And you're kind of getting the picture of like, okay, the Braves are better than when they were struggling for a bit, but they don't feel like World Series threats. I, I, would, I would say that I do think they'll have a stretch where they'll play really well so that what might be a 10 game over 500 they could go to 15 or 16 but they just they sudden. don't feel like a but team right now the phillies are are by far the better team in my mind um and you think about the philly pitching right we you know we always like to think about wheeler and nola at the top of the rotation but i would say that ranger suarez and christopher sanchez probably push could be nola could be their number four right, right. now and I, and I think that that's the biggest thing for the Phillies, and that's going to make them, you know, it's really right coming down to this. the Phillies and the Dodgers and the NL, and it's I don't think it's a function of the other teams just not being good enough. Those two teams just seem like they're a step above everybody else right now. And, and I would even say, you know, that the Dodgers need to get their pitchers back, and they still have a uh, an all-star team on the on the injured list of guys that could, you know, that could start for any team. And we team know that's anyway. a team that's going to be active at the deadline. So and I guess some of these injured pitchers, if they do come back, they will be rested, if nothing else, oh, yeah. you know, for the playoffs but the Phillies you know they go so deep in the rotation today uh, they got a bad start for, out of Michael Mercado who was only picked
attention because Ty Walker is on the injured list. And some guy named Tyler Phillips in his first game for the Phillies comes in out of the bullpen after Mercado and gives it up right, and, and strikes out seven. Um, and the first guy since Cole Hamels in 06 to strike out seven in his first start is for the, the Yeah, for the Phillies. So this guy should be starting the next game, obviously. Because uh, I don't think he's going to be starting the <laughs> no, next game. I don't game. think so either. Too many pitches. But they have a lot of guys. I'm talking about the next time his rotation oh. spot comes up. You know, Mercado, you can sit down and let this guy pitch. Um, but and the and the bullpen, as we keep saying, is good. So I, you know, look, I have a I have a lot of belief in the Phillies because they do it on both sides, and they're doing it without Schwarber and uh, obviously Bryce Harper. And, right and those guys look like they, they look like they're back about coming back soon. Apparently, both of them were running at about 100 percent today, Sunday. So I think we'll see them back soon. We don't have much to say about uh, the Mets. Uh, they did get back uh, Edwin Diaz, uh, which Ooh. immediately has paid dividends for them. Got a save, blew a save, and then picked up the win today as the Mets picked him up after a rough ninth inning. And and you know while that doesn't solve the Met bullpen needs, it certainly you know makes things a lot easier for them. And the Mets got a look this week uh, against the Nationals uh, at James Wood, who made his debut, the heralded uh, James Wood. Right, and they're going to see him right again as they come back to play them again this week. shortly. That's, yeah. that's right. And, and uh, I will say, I watched James Wood. You know, play. he can run. Guy looks like he's he can he gets some bat speed. Uh, he looks like he knows where the strike zone is. Uh, he's just this big, tall, imposing gangly, presence in the play. Physical guy uh, up there. Uh, and the Nationals kind of did something interesting. They the DFA Joey Man, uh, or sent Joey Manessas down to the minor DFA'd leagues. DFA Nick Senzel. And DFA Senzel. So that's that's kind of you know the Nationals are showing me that you know we're not done trying yet. And will they try? I, I think they're going to give it the, a try, a good try over the rest of July, and then they'll make moves for their future once August comes around. You're 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 not you're only five and a half games back of the wild card. So as long as you're poking around going into August, you can at least keep your young team hungry and focused on playing good baseball for the full season, which can be rough on a, on a young team, especially some of these guys that have never played this many games before, having them keep focused through the dog days of August. Right, right. Having your team be in the wild card hunt helps with that. It's a lot easier to keep them focused then than if you're, the, say, the Miami Marlins, who are 32 and 58. And Dave Martinez is a very good mm -hmm. manager to have there, kind of managing all of that. And we watched a guy named Jake Irwin pitch a gem for the Nationals. So I'm telling you. That, he so might be their all-star. Right, you, you watch a guy pitch and thinking, wow, I have not really heard of this guy. This guy's really good. Um, so remember that name, Jake Irwin. Uh, he, he was uh, doing something special this week. Um, the, uh, the Central has the, the, you know, the Brewers still sort of bumping along uh, in first place. The Cardinals uh, have impressed me sort of turning it around. They turned it around, yes. I, I think the biggest thing for them I don't is know how. Hesley has been Kelsey? Yes. Ryan has been extremely good out of the bullpen. I think he leads the majors with 31 saves which is why they're doing so well, despite the fact that they're giving up more. They, they're like, I have like a negative four. The Cardinals have a negative 40 for run differential. So to me, that's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Right, right, because they've been <laughs> really good in one run games. Yeah, you know how that. that can end up happening. Right. <laughs> but that's the kind of team that if all of a sudden the bats go like extra quiet for a week or the pitching has a rough week, they could lose a bunch of games in a row and fall right back down. And then the rest of the Central is just... Uh, you're kind of picking for which three of these middling teams between the Pirates, the Reds, and the Cubs you think are going to play the best. I, I actually think the Pirates might be the best team out of that group. Uh, in the three. I, okay, I've had to pick. I picked the Reds, but right. yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, neither of us are picking the Cubs, and I picked them to win the division, by the way. And they look nightmarish. They just, it's, just, it's just the mojo is not there for the Cubs. And that <laughs> happens sometimes. I, I, that was something we were saying about this Mets team for a long time. The, the mojo just isn't and, right. And, and Craig Council's supposed to be the you know the manager whisperer. You know, you know they they paid him all this money the, to come from right, Milwaukee, the, the, the who's easy, in first place. The easiest and he goes way to the to, Cubs. Right, the <laughs> easiest way to look at Craig Council's job and why it's rough for him is look at that Chicago Cubs starting lineup as as any opposing team's fan and say, is there anybody in that lineup? You would take over somebody in your own team's your, lineup. Your thumper is Cody Bellinger, and Cody Bellinger is a nice like number three or four mm -hmm. best hitter in your lineup. Not when he is your number one best star right. hitter in think your lineup. I think Michael Bush has been their best hitter. Well, he might team. have been there, but I'm saying in terms of what you expect when you look at the Cubs. Right, and, and Bellinger has not been very not good. been very good this year, and 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 you know the. The best thing you can say is they got back Justin Steele recently, and he went out and threw um, his first victory of the year, which surprised me, uh, a complete game, 95-pitch gem. Uh, and that, that is one of 16 complete games so far in 2024. And I thought to myself, you know, 
16 complete games, is that more or less than I expected? I think it's more than I probably expected. Right. You know, that, that the guy, so you would say the guys never do it. They've done it 16 that's times. Pretty, you're yeah. Right, and 16, it's more than you'd expect. So, uh, yeah, and, and... And in the West, the Padres have been playing good baseball, still powered by Jerks and Profar, who is having a season for the ages, at least for This him. is a guy who wasn't even on a roster who got right, picked right. up he as was a spare was part. A, right, he was a, a afterthought going into this season, and he's been so much more. Right, and and so the the Padres, I, I'm believing that the Padres are going to be one of the two wild card teams beyond the Braves. I think there's a really good chance of that. They've got the second best record aside from the the, the Braves. You're really not too worried about any of the teams in the Central. So the only thing I think the Padres have to be particularly worried about is if the Cardinals keep plodding along, sort of as they are. The Padres don't play well in the second half, and then a team like the Mets catches fire and comes roaring up. That's gonna, the only way you're going to get. I'm less confident than you. I said last week that you know there were like five, te- nine teams, you know, between 40 and 45 less as well. Now after this week, they all got even closer together. So you can pick any of those teams. Any team that has like a three week good stretch right. is going to the put third, themselves the out third, in front. The third wild card spot in the National League is going to be a really fun race because you've got. The, the Diamondbacks and the Giants are in it. Both of those teams are challenged in different ways, and I don't think you would feel particularly good about it. You know, one of those teams doesn't hit for enough power, and one of those teams is the slowest team in baseball. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and unfortunately for the Padres, Brandon Fott got hit last night by a, a rocket off the bat of the D-backs. Uh, Luis, uh, D-backs, D-backs, Brandon Fott, off of Luis Arias uh, at 98 miles an hour. And the first thing I thought was, is that the hardest ball that Luis Arias hit this season? Might be. <laughs> that hit the pitcher in the ankle, and he left the game. Um, and so that, that's a concern for the Diamondbacks because they're trying to get you know some consistency, and they don't have any of that. The Diamondbacks felt like a young team last year that sort of overachieved, and Looks certainly... Like Corbin Carroll has had a he's come around. He's starting to play a little bit better now, but he has not had the second year campaign you're hoping for out of your your know your superstar. And so the I think they're a team that also carrying the weight of being the World Series you know representatives from the National League I think affected them. And they've also just not gotten what you expect out of your starting pitching. You were hoping for so much more. And you've gotten so very little, especially from the top end guys that you went out and spent a whole bunch of money on. Eduardo Rodriguez hasn't thrown a pitch Montgomery, for them yet. And Montgomery he hasn't, hasn't thrown been, a pitch. And Montgomery's been bad. Right, right. So they, that that does say that they still could come back. Um, and 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 the other thing I wanted to mention, I want to ask you about this. So so we we talked about the Reds before. Just back to that a second. So they have a positive run differential, plus plus eighteen for the season. I'm looking at the manager going, if I wanted to shake up the Reds right right now, I don't like, I think that team actually could do something. You know, like, would I just fire the manager and to make a change to, to shake him up? It just seems like they're not where they should be. I think that's a, that's the kind of thing that can happen with a team like this because sometimes that's what it can take. I have nothing against David Bell, by the way. But this is, you would do it around now, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like, 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 okay, we're in this. We have a chance. You know, let's, that, that, let's that's rattle it. some cages. Let's see if we can make our team better without having to give away anything. Right, so next week we'll, um, before the All-Star break, I guess we'll kind of do our mid-season, you know, we'll, you know we'll, we'll go report over a little teams, bit. Discuss the All-Star picks, go over what our second half predictions and, you know, any potential moves we might see coming up. Did you um, see the All-Star game uniforms they put out this week? No, I did not. Okay, so I you know, made a big, because mainly the comments were, why can't they wear the uniform of their own, sit, you know, the own team that they play on? And, and we all know that Major League Baseball wants to, you know, have like a merchandise. Right, they the want to have a special. And, and, and these uniforms, I don't really care that much, but I do understand and kind of feel like, yeah, if you want to make a unique uniform for the All-Star game, let, let Aaron Judge wear his Yankee uniform and have a big ASG on it so it only can be used for that, and that's a particular, that's, that's a, you know, right. design, uniform you could design buy. Design an All-Star game logo, put that on the All-Star right. game uniform. But let them wear the uniforms of their teams. I, just, I get that. Or at least have them all line up in them. When they come out to be introduced. And then go and change? And then go and change. <laughs> that would be funny. I'm fine with that. That would be, I think, because it just looks better. Visually, having all those guys standing there in their own team uniforms looks really cool. Yeah, and, and, and to me, as, as, as the old guy uh, syndrome, it kind of brings me back to the way that it used to be. Right, The All-Star game is not what it used to be. We all know that. I, uh, it, it looks better with them in their own uniforms. I, 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 I agree. So we'll talk about that next week.